Hey guys, this is Carpenter with RV Crazy. I just figured I'd give you a quick interior tour of my Tioga Phoenix Flyer SD by Fleetwood, I guess. So, I'm gonna start up front. It is just a standard E350 chassis, but I have added two little levels that make life so easy. While I am parking, whatever, I can just look at this level for side to side, and then this one here on the door, as long as the door is closed, you know, it'll give me front to back. And it's so easy. These marks are in inches and how many inches I need to go up or down. I have to sneeze in maybe a minute. I don't know when. I need to look at a light or something. Come on, sneeze. Oh man, that seemed to take forever. I'm sorry about that. So, these are in inches. They uh, are specific which one for the front and back and which one side to side. You could tell they have a little bit different of number systems on there, but they work absolutely amazing. I, you know, it's the only level system that I use. And when I just set it up, I set it up when the RV was perfectly level, and then I made sure to screw them in because the adhesive that's on them doesn't keep them from moving. So make sure to screw those in if you uh, ever install those in your RV. This by the way, it seems to catch everything and I lose things in it a lot. I just found two of my GoPro batteries in it and I haven't been able to use my GoPro because the third battery seemed to quit working. So luckily I found my two GoPro batteries in there. I found so many different things in there that I've lost for weeks, months, whatever, I don't know. You know, till the next time I go through it. But let's see, here we have the rest of the RV. Up top, we have a very small um, over the cab bed. It's, it's actually a full size queen, but there's just no headroom up there. I'll climb up there to kind of show you that, oof. There is not much room at all. You know, you can't sit up, you can't, uh, yeah, you can't do much of anything up here, but it is a really comfortable bed, just because of the whole limited room thing, I don't use it, and I don't really have guests use it either. I actually uh, make my dinette into a bed whenever I have a guest, and I've kind of just left it like that ever since, uh, I had Brian out here, and yeah, so I am going to show you my TV mount right now. I'm sure a lot of you have already seen it, but this is a robot arm available on eBay. It normally is a wall mount where there's just a, another bracket that you screw into the wall, but I noticed that it's an inch and a quarter and a closet rod is also an inch and a quarter. So this is just a closet rod. I cut it to length and then used two different uh, end kits to screw it top and bottom. So this is kind of its storage mode. When I'm moving, I lock it up against the wall and make it so it can't move. When I want to use it, I normally tilt it down a little bit and, you know, just angle it towards myself, but it can go anywhere that I really want it to. If I am, you know, sleeping on the back bed, I can flip it all the way around. Let's see, where do I normally put it? All the way up to the ceiling. And there, I could watch the TV from bed just fine. It, it actually is really nice, but I end up not really watching TV from bed at all. I, I don't really watch TV much at all. I watch movies, but not much TV. You know, this thing will go anywhere that I want it to. And uh, yes, a couple times I have accidentally driven off without it properly in its storage mode. It ends up, you know, swinging all the way around, banging into the fridge. Nothing's gotten broken though, so yeah. It's just something that you have to make sure to remember to, you know, look at. If you have those little slap things you put on your steering wheel, put one of those on your, for your TV, but 
you know, a couple times doing it and you're gonna remember to lock your TV down every time. So I normally keep it right about there. So, you know, you can lower it all the way down, put it wherever you want. Nice little TV mount. I have LEDs in all of my lights. I don't think I can really. Sometimes these things come right down easy and there we go. So these are the LEDs that I have. They are a GRV LED available on Amazon. I highly recommend this bulb. I actually tried five different kinds of LED bulbs before I found the exact ones that I wanted. These are highly rated and yeah. I actually did a video on them, but then I never edited it. And yeah, I actually did a video comparing all of the different bulbs and just never edited it. Edited it. Edited it. That's a funny thing to say. But yeah, it. Do you, don't you guys ever get like these videos where it just becomes too long and drawn out and you just dread the day where you have to edit and splice together all the footage and you know everything like that? Yeah, I get that all the time. So. Sorry about the jerkiness, I'm using a selfie stick. I have an EP Solar uh, 30 amp charge controller. It's a like a ViewStar PWM charge controller. I absolutely love this charge controller, but the one thing that I don't like is the state of charge. Always says that it's too low when the solar isn't putting any amps into the system. When the solar is putting amps into the system, it says a perfect number, but the state of charge on here isn't an actual state of charge of the battery. It's the state of the solar, how much it's charging. It's, it's a weird thing. It's, it should have been done differently in their, uh, their software, but they didn't, so oh well. Let me see if I could, uh, I only have two solar panels right now. I built this system to be able to accept four. Let's see. There are my solar panels. Just got one on each side. I did not set these solar panels up to be efficient, you know, tilt wise all the time. I basically set them up to be the best of both worlds. One's tilted a little bit this way, one's tilted a little bit this way. It's the angle of the roof. My roof is curved, so I kind of wanted to not ever think about how I'm parking the RV and just have it, you know, parked where I want to park it. So I have Corian countertops installed. And underneath those countertops, I have an LED light strip. It's, you know, just a typical LED light strip. You get them from Canada all day long. And it'll go any color I want, you know, different. It's got all, you know, a ton of different modes. I typically just do a solid color, you know, and yeah, just a little bit of a mood lighting. It does work really well for just, you know, having a light, little bit of light in the background, watching a movie, anything like that. Let's see, ooh, let's check out my little fireplace. So, this unit was a freestanding unit and I basically made more shielding for it so that the backside of it doesn't have a bunch of heat that you know heats up this, this hole, it's all back here. There's more shielding that puts, pushes air, hot air out of the top. There's I think three different, different, you know, complete shields that push the hot air out. And uh, drop my mic. I'll turn it on here. You know, it's it's just a typical manual uh, thermostat, and it is actually a thermostat. It doesn't have the actual degrees on it, but it does work as a thermostat. Gotta wait for propane to get to it. I haven't turned it on for a while since it's been warm and I've been uh, using electric. 
Almost there. So there's just the pilot light. And this is a vent free heater, but uh, being a vent free heater, it puts moisture into the air. So that's something you have to think about. You have to, you know, occasionally get that moisture out of the air. And, you know, other than that though, it's absolutely amazing heat. It uses no electricity at all because the thermostat is manual. And yeah, I, I really do love this unit. It's great when you're just boondocking and you don't want to use electricity at all. And yeah. When uh, when the thermostat you know goes to its temperature, it just leaves the pilot light on and the flame the main flame goes out. And then you know when it gets above the temperature, it turns back on again. I have noticed that it's a little bit of a far range. It seems to be about 10 degrees between where it turns on and off. I like to keep it kind of hot though, so you know between 70 and 80. It, it it is a far range though. You know I would like it to be a little bit narrower and maybe it's the place that I have my thermostat installed it is right here you can see a dark spot where my thermostat's installed the not the thermostat thermocouple whatever it's called where that's actually what senses the temperature so you know maybe it's where that's installed that you know makes it that, that 10 degrees or maybe it's just within the propane valve I'm not sure so this is my bed that's the one that I sleep on. It does have a memory foam topper that I added to it. It makes it just crazy comfortable. Love this bed. I used to sleep with my head on that side, but it felt a little drafty. Um, it just, not so much drafty, it just was cold. You know, there's a window there and a window here. And I ended up switching it up and putting my head on this side, which has been just, you know, awesome I I don't know why I didn't do it before it just you know keeps my head in a warmer spot of the RV and yeah I really like it obviously with all RVs storage all the way around here's one thing kind of uh, cool these little plastic containers available Fred Meyer, Walmart, wherever. I got these ones at Fred Meyer so that I can get ones with different colored lids. They fit really good up in here and they just, they keep all of my stuff organized, you know, all my GoPro stuff, my drill. And it's, you know, it's really nice to be able to have this organization up here and be able to actually use the height of my cupboard because, you know, typically, you only use this bottom part of the cupboard and the rest of it just goes to waste. So that is a really nice thing to just, you know, help organize the, the RV. So typical freezer fridge. I have been traveling today, so things have moved around a little bit. Oreo Klondike bars are absolutely amazing. Get out and try them. So good. Yeah, don't have much food in it right now. Gonna be gone for the weekend, so. Okay. So it's a bit of a mess in here right now because I have a ton of clothes in it, but, uh, and some clothes have fallen down. But this is another area that is a total waste of space in most RVs, the closet. Now, normally it just has this closet rod in here. And I found this shelving unit at Fred Meyer that you could put the height wherever you wanted on those pegs and pegs, whatever it is, on these shelves. You could have the shelves at any height that you want. And it just, it goes all the way to the back and it just helps me to store a ton of clothes. Obviously, you know, I have enough clothes that I don't have to go to the laundromat very often. And yeah, with, without these shelves in here, everything would look like this. And you know, some of this stuff has fallen from the back, but uh, I just kind of shoved a couple things, a jacket and uh, some fleece lined jeans in there. So it just kind of takes up a lot of space. And yeah, just dress shirts. That's really the only thing that I keep uh, hanging, dress shirts and dress pants. So realistically, I didn't even need that much space, but 
it's nice to have room to hang a jacket or two uh, whenever. Here's my bathroom, Corian countertops again, super basic. This light you have to turn on manually, it's not switched like this other one is. I did install fantastic fan front and rear in the RV. I am going to open it. Typically I leave this vent just open just slightly so that the fan will be able to turn on. And uh, I just turn it on when I'm taking a shower and when, leave it on when I'm done with the shower. And then whenever it gets too hot in here, I just will turn that on and open a window and it creates a nice cross breeze. So, this is how I get room in my shower. It's an extendable shower curtain rod. Right now there's no room, and now there's a bunch of room. I do have an Oxygenix shower head. Works really good. I need to clean my shower. I recently installed this little soap catch. My dad had one in an old house when I was young and I just kind of liked it. You know, being able to just grab the soap, soap is always dry, stays dry, and it stays in that spot. You know, instead, you know, a lot of times I was, whenever I would uh, move the RV, soap would fall down or, you know, whatever. But uh, that's the shower. I use this shower all the time. I'm, uh, I'm not someone that isn't going to use the amenities of my RV because they all work great. You know, it's a little bit less space than probably a shower at this RV park that I'm at, but I don't care. It's my own space. It's my own germs. It's perfect. I use my own toilet. Yes, I poop in there, but yeah. You just clean it all out and it works perfect. I've had no issues. So, this tour got a little bit long, but I think it went quite in detail. And yeah, that is all I have to say about that. I hope you all have a great day and I will talk to you all later. Bye.